All right, so the last problem uh, on the test um, is a uh, chapter seven problem, change in entropy or isentropic efficiency. So here's an isentropic efficiency of a steady flow device. So here's an adiabatic nozzle. So this would be a good one to give you to test you on, you know, steady flow devices and isentropic efficiencies. All right, so air at 500 kPa, 400 Kelvin, 30 meters per second. Uh, and then it leaves at 300 kPa, 350. Uh, so let's go ahead and could we get the H, right? Yeah, 400.98 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, could we get anything else while we're there? Well, may maybe so. We'll, we'll think about it right here. Could we get the H to actual, right? 350.49 from, from those properties. Um, using, okay, not constant specific heat, but using variable specific heat to determine the isentropic efficiency. Okay. So, and, and we won't do entropy generation. We won't do entropy generation. Um, the isentropic efficiency for nozzles is, uh, what is it, V V2 actual squared over V2 isentropic squared. V2 actual squared over V2 isentropic squared. Um, and I don't think I have either of those velocities just yet. But maybe I can get them. Where are those velocities? They're in the conservation of energy equation. The equation that I, I, I forget uh, many times. Um, Q plus W. Let's see, for a steady flow device, if we have the same M dot, then this is H out minus h in v2 minus v or v out squared minus v in squared over two oops oops over two all right that's my conservation of energy for um a nozzle all right uh i, I can't i can't neglect these kinetic energies all right one half m v squared but here's the m dot is out here um but uh, there's no Q, there's no W, uh, and so actually this M dot, I can divide through, if the left-hand side is zero, I can divide this through. So let me think about this. Zero equals H, H2 minus H1, V2 squared over two minus V1 squared over two. And I, I can do this for actual or isentropic, right? H2 actual and V2 actual or H2S and V2S. So it's really two separate equations. Since I have H2 actual, let's see. I have H2 actual, I have H1, I have V1, there we go. I'm going to use that to get V2 actual. Okay? Got that? And so I, I forget sometimes, you can use conservation of energy for these problems, and you can use it twice. You can use it for actual or isentropic. Here I'm using it for actual, all right? The H2 actual, 350.49 minus H4. 400.98, that's kilojoules per uh, kilogram, uh, V2 actual squared over 2. And in order, to, because the, these are kilojoules, kilojoules per kilogram, I need to divide it by 1,000, minus V1, 30 squared over 2, divided by 1,000. All right. V2 actual, 319.1 meters per second. All right. So there we go. I've got that. Yes. I've got V2 actual. How do I get V2S? Well, maybe I get it from here. This, um, if I have H2S and V2S, then I can use my, um, energy equation to get V2S, but I don't have H2S, so H2S, I don't have it yet. How can I get it? All right, so so now it's kind of the main 
part of these problems. How do you get H2S? Well, I need to use variable specific heats. H2S, this is isentropic. So I have some isentropic equations, right? I have some isentropic equations, or I have some isentropic processes. Remember that T1, PR1, PR2, T2S, T2S, I could get H2S, H2S energy. All right, so from T1 of 400K, I can get a PR1 of 3.806. Do I know the ratio of pressures? Yes. I know the ratio of pressures. So the ratio of relative pressures would be the same as ratio of pressures. So PR1 over PR2 equals P1 over P2. PR1, 3 point, let's see, 3 point eight. 06 equals P1 500 over 300. So I would get PR2 2.286. So from that, table A17, probably have to interpolate to get H2S and to get t 2 s T2S. T2S and H2S if I need T2S. I don't think I even need T2S. They want H2S. Let me go to this table, 2.286. Let's go to the property tables. Whoops. Property tables. This is, is this air? Yes, be careful. Make sure. This is air. Um, I've got a PR of 2.286. 2.286. So interpolating between these two H values... If I've got a 2.286, go back and make sure you can interpolate. I've got an H2S, let's say if this makes sense, 346. Yeah, does that make sense? 346, if I was in review, 346.3 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so now I can use H2S minus H1. V2S squared over 2 minus V1 squared over 2. 346.3 minus my H1, 400.98 plus V2S squared over 2 divided by 1,000 minus 30 squared over 2 divided by 1,000. V2S, almost there, 331.8 meters per second. 331.8 meters per second. So the efficiency is 319.1 squared over 331.8 squared 0.925 or 92.5 percent. And I had already found, let's see, the exit velocity box that in 319.1. 319.1. Okay. So that was tough. But what did we do? We used this process to get H2S and we used conservation of energy to get the velocities. Right? We used that process to get H2S. We already had H2 actual. And so we used our relative process to get, because we wanted uh, variable specific heats. Uh, to get um, H2S and use conservation of energy to get those. So, what if we had used constant specific heats? What if we had used constant specific heats um, at these temperatures? And these temperatures, not I think using constant specific heats would, would be good. Their temperature difference is not very large. Um, you know, then we would have had, what was it, T... 1 over T, and don't quote me on this, it was the K, something something like you know, one of these uh, to get T2S. And also right here, we could have done CP delta T if it had told us or let us use constant specific heats. 
So maybe try that as an alternate method, see if you get the same answers. All right, so problem number seven, last problem, then you'll be finished with the semester, finished with this class, um, a um, maybe an isentropic efficiency problem uh, that's worth, I think, only 15 points. Uh, so a little bit less those 20 point problems, okay? All right, well, yeah, good luck. You have two and a half hours uh, to do seven problems. I think you can do it.